part of Kazakhstan is at a standstill. The snowstorm has taken thousands of travelers hostage. The traffic jam stretches back for miles. Sanibek, a businessman and his driver, Ruslan, heads straight into the mouth of the beast. Zani Beck is a consultant. He helps foreign businesses to set up in Kazakhstan. In a rush to get to a business meeting on the other side of the country, he forgot to check the weather. The police tried to dissuade the daredevils from continuing their journey. Не хотят нести ответственность, потому что потом спасать людей это тоже лишняя головная боль. After hours of discussions, this tank arrives as a savior. The police agree to let some travelers through on the condition that they stay behind the armored vehicle. But very quickly, some of the cars overtake it. The businessman and his driver respect the instructions for a while, but the tank is slow with a cruising speed of 60 kilometers an hour. They too take the risk of leaving it behind. Business doesn't wait. A daring choice. Some vehicles drive in a convoy to feel safer, but the steppes of Kazakhstan are known for their violent blizzards. The blusterous winds can make temperatures drop to minus 40 degrees centigrade in just a few hours. Zanibek and Ruslan are going to cross the steppes for 1,200 kilometers to reach the city of Aral. Kazakhstan is a wild country with an unpredictable climate. In a few kilometers, we go from mud to ice to desert and its 40 degree temperatures. For centuries, the Kazakhs have faced these extreme climates. Only a few brave adventurers cross the steps, attracted by the oil money that lies underground. The tankers have replaced the caravans of camels from the days of Genghis Khan. But his desire to conquer was nothing compared to that of modern man, who has made an entire sea vanish. I thank you, seeing things. Danger is never far from the heart of the steppe. 
As predicted by the police, 40 kilometers away, the storm is holding up the risk takers. Zanibek and Ruslan will have to roll up their sleeves. They lend a hand, but with over 30 tons to move, the effort is in vain. The truck drivers know that they're going to have to spend the night there. Everybody gets ready. It's minus five degrees and it's going to get even colder overnight. This white 4x4 is trying to be discreet and unremarkable, but something blows its cover. The driver's sunglasses, strange in the middle of a storm. The cash escort, who looks like a secret agent, and his colleague are transporting a small fortune in cash, enough to earn them some attention. But today the two escorts are safe. Where could any armed robbers run to? Zanibek and Ruslan managed to get through in the end. The duo head straight into the unknown. Their fate is sealed three kilometers later. The two associates are city dwellers and don't know much about fixing cars. The storm has completely cut out the telephone network and the emergency services are snowed under. The tank has disappeared and a few kilometers ahead, the bulldozer that is supposed to be helping travelers is also having troubles. The night promises to be freezing. 
and the two men are starting to think they should have turned back. They're still lucky as the blizzard hasn't caught up with them yet. Further ahead, its force is devastating. It took travellers by surprise, as at this time of year the steppe should be covered in grass and buds. It's hard to believe, but this is springtime. Two hundred kilometres further south, the contrast is striking. The steppe is finally breathing. The Kazakhs nicknamed camels the boats of the desert. On the horizon, their humps of fat look like sails. In the spring, they're the only ones who can cross the steppe without any problem. The others are destined to get stuck in the mud. This desert isn't made of sand, but of clay. Eventually it will thaw, but before the sun dries it out, the ice turns to mud. Nuradil and his brother have walked for 10 kilometers to get their flock of sheep out of the desert. They had both left to get them water when their truck stopped dead. They're going to try and get it out of the mud. A 300 horsepower engine and six wheel drive are no help.
Three hours later, a 1,000 horsepower engine arrives to save them. Will it be enough? Шаршадым, шаршадым, шаршадым. Андергесе қазу керек болса, сөзергесе қазамыз ем. Much worse. The bulldozer won't save the little truck. Nora Dill will go to fetch it in a month when all of the water has evaporated. Throughout the region, farmers raise the only animal who is capable of withstanding the harshness of the steppe. Here, the thermometer swings between minus 40 in winter and 40 in summer. Dromedaries and camels are the cows of the desert. On this unforgiving land, farmers are practically heroes. Yenisbay set up his farm when Kazakhstan regained independence in 1991. At the time, he was a driver for a state farm. Pizza tree, Moskvich, Sinaka Silka, what you attack? Empty the washings, yet a Zapchas less up. Alka Piraver Tatar Technicola was Larn Bernman Alpil Vasanovit to Bern. Was two two cases sixteen colors. Sorry, my son, Larn is a Jackson. Zakal Jackson and Bern. None Bern so. Она зилдарга пайдага сырбатырмы кәзимбей. 
Казахстан закал тушок, я сразу отказываюсь. Бежала жить пить. Мнов, я бы же сорвался, а скандалов вода воду мнов. Кунью вон бесерит, мадам вон бесерит сутати. А кунди ти гелу градса, айда потом масса, сона, ой, он гельмедит, минде пшин, айтам ну. Мнов, я не тю солга гилатермис. Жазым мезгілінде алты реттен сауамыз, қазір мұнау қысын уақытына қарай төрт мезгіл сау атырмыз. Байла ұлтыр, қота жіберет. The biggest camels can provide up to 800 kilos of meat. Біздер, бота қора ғой, бота қора. Жас кезінде енді ғовал ғой, бала ғой, бала ғой, қазақша айтқанды. The reputation of his meat and his milk have won him a prize. Мынау Махамбет ауданы құрметті азамат дейтін медал. Біздің ең бөміздің жемісі деп есептейм. His success is not just found pinned to his chest. It can also be seen on his dining table in the exotic fruits that are so hard to find in Kazakhstan. Unlike cows, camels produce a milk that is destined to keep its young alive in the most hostile regions of the planet. According to the Kazakhs, it has medicinal powers. Camel milk can be found on all tables in Kazakhstan. Yanis Bai and his family hope that one day they will be exporting to the whole world. Seven hundred kilometers away from Yanis Bai's farm, the snowstorm is not calming down. If anything, it's gotten stronger. It has engulfed the city of Aktobe. Here we find Zanibek and Ruslan, who luckily haven't had to spend the night outside. The two men managed to repair the car enough to get back to the city. A mechanic has come to tow them. Вообще не заводится. Холодно. Окна запотевают, видишь. Лед, уже лед здесь. Аккумулятор подсел, пока вчера ночью ехали. Узнать причину, едем на СТО. Потом посмотрим, будем мы эту автомашину делать или нет. Their journey is delayed, but tonight they'll sleep in the warmth of a hotel room. These drivers will be spending another night in their trucks. According to Kazakh legend, the blizzard takes away the souls of the evil. While they wait, they are forced to dig to move forward. Those stranded on the road are exhausted. Oh, 
здесь вот сейчас где-то да, минимум 200-250 машин. Вот сейчас на стоянке, на территории стоянки здесь стоят. А вокруг вот на километрах, наверное, ну, в масштабе 100 километров в радиусе, да, около 1000 машин скопилось. Я ехал с России, с Татарстана. Никому еще не известно, когда откроется дорога. Вот у меня машина как бы он не, не рефрижератор, а просто изотерм. Я вожу вообще кондитерские изделия. For the time being, in this cold, Salim Jam's cargo is in no danger, but his wallet is rapidly shrinking. In this roadside restaurant, the price of food has doubled since the drivers have been stuck. The establishment is open 24 hours a day and business is booming. Everyone deals with the boredom as best they can. It's dangerous in this temperature. Some don't even have enough fuel to stay warm. The following morning, the hopelessness gives way to a desire for rebellion. It spreads from truck to truck by CB radio. He still needs to get his 30-ton vehicle into the immense traffic jam. Only a few meters in three hours. The bad news just keeps coming. То, что он три дня стоял на морозе, может что-то подмерзло на там. Сырость, влага. Смотри, вот еще одна машина, тоже вот сложила ее спереди. Вот это ожидание выматывает все. Неопределенно. Не знаешь, когда. A whole day just to travel 15 kilometers. Почему эту профессию выбрал? Наверное, я так думаю, что судьба, наверное, жизнь. Конечно, сильно. По по детям скучаю. По дочке маленькая дочка у меня. По ней сильно скучаю. Salim Jan's greatest fear is to find his truck encased in frozen ice in the morning. Середина марта, и вот видите, какая ситуация. По бокам, вот с поля, 
Буран задувает тут прямо на дорогу. Маленький он такой даже камушек будет лежать на дороге. Вот он оттуда начинается все больше, больше, больше. В течение часа может дорогу полностью перекрыть. It snowed all night and early in the morning. And although Salimjan doesn't know it yet, a surprise is waiting. Five hundred kilometers further south, the coastal resort of Aral is celebrating the Nariz festival, which means the awakening of nature, the spring. Victory against the winter and the forces of darkness. The day of spring when the Kazakhs forget the grudges and quarrels of the year, everyone opens their house up and offers traditional food. In Aral, the spring festival reminds the locals of fishing in spring a painful memory for the population. Aral is a port town, or rather, it was. The sea has disappeared. The harbour cranes are a reminder of the work carried out here. Fishing boats and commercial vessels pushed up against the loading docks. <laughs> Aral's inland sea used to be twice the size of Belgium. Its agony lasted for 45 years and started the day that the Soviets diverted the river that flowed into it to irrigate supply water to their cotton fields. In revenge, as it was going, the sea left behind a poisoned chalice. Despite 
Despite all of this, his son can carry on the career of fisherman. The Kazakh government is trying to save the Aral Sea by building dikes. Thanks to these titanic works, a small sea has been saved. Kazir kilijat kanjir na burungat tiengiz deng asta. Kazir musu ilu jilda ibot na tiengiz deng kait kan na violence na najir. Kazir bat bak na musu nashar na bat bat musu ya musu nashar na. Oan jirma liter benzin jagams bar paytu na musu nashar bot na oaz alun musu jirms. Kesiyor yine de balga olup tapsta olatkan, onda yine de hatta çok kötü rüyalar mı yaptılar? O sbaldarın menüsüyle o sıra yok mu? Şahin cevizi salada mı? Kuvvetsin, yine kuvvetsin de. Thanks to the dikes that hold the water back, his dream could come true. The Aral Sea today spreads over 5,000 square kilometers, which is 9% of its original area, and it keeps increasing. The dried fish sellers are reappearing on the sides of the roads. Салам алейкум, Амир. О, дела не, не, столь, не, не сильно хорошие. Стоим до сих пор. От хранта 15 километров отъехали. Салинджан complains, but this morning the sun was a pleasant surprise for him. He's relieved, like the thousands of drivers stuck in single file over nearly 50 kilometers. The road has finally opened up. Забуксовал я, забуксовал, видишь? Сейчас поставлю сетку. Ну, подберет, блядь, плоскости нету, блядь. 
Вставай, сверху эта корочка подтаивает, как мыло. The end of the journey looks like it will be more relaxed. 80 kilometers further, the snow has disappeared. A wind of freedom blows over the steppe, but not for everybody. Kazakhstan is definitely a land of contrast. 500 kilometers away, their car repaired, we find Zanibek, the businessman, and his driver, Ruslan. After the snow, the two associates find themselves driving through a muddy swamp. The road is uneven and difficult, so Ruslan tries to drive on the lower side, which he finds smoother. До конца, до конца. Мы застряли в грязи. Одна колея. В трех метрах от асфальтированной дороги не можем ни туда, ни сюда выехать. Только буквально три метра от асфальта, все. Ты уже встрял. О чем говорили, да, после байка не будет. Прям идеальная дорога. Я идеально вижу. Они нас обманули. Конкретно, жестко. По жестокому, по беспределу. Только. Но пока вот так вот стучит нормально. Bashed about and jolted in every direction by the potholes, the 4x4's transmission, already seriously tested, starts to show signs of weakness. There are no breakdown mechanics in the middle of the steppe, but luckily the Kazakhs thought to install repair bridges on the sides of the roads, like in garages. Смотришь, что произошло, пытается выяснить, какое место. It doesn't look like Zanibek will make his business meeting. The only person who benefits from the steppe's terrain is Kwandik, nicknamed the Taxi of the Desert. Kwandik and his taxi crisscross the villages in search of customers, but they are few and far between. And bad roads cost him a lot of money.
He doesn't take home much pay at the end of the month. In the region, most Kazakhs like Kwandak make a living wage. Here, life is hard. The men battle with the elements and nobody concerns themselves with the issues of ecology or pollution. The pollution in this part of Kazakhstan is very high. The country is the 17th biggest oil producer in the world and the 30th for gas. Drilling and exploration have had disastrous effects on the steppe and the grass that feeds the animals. Nuribek's family raises camels and, according to him, the animals are starting to suffer from all of the pollution. Despite the oil money, some roads are difficult to maintain because of the climate. A price that Kazakhs like Zanibek have to pay. The businessman managed to make his meeting, but he was four days late. For Salim Jan, it was seven. Each of the drivers wonder what adventure is waiting for them on the next journey. <laughs> <laughs>